we are live. Welcome to Ms. Marvel Episode 6 Thoughts. This episode is called No Normal. I don't think my MCU disguise is working. I'm just going to ditch it. Spoilers for the MCU leading up to this point, including this episode. So, I am just briefly going to talk about... Yeah, so, before I get into the specific stuff about this episode... Overall, I think the show did the globe trotting better than Moon Knight, and the core mysteries of the pilot episode of both was left more interesting by the end of the pilot for the rest of the show to unravel. And the, the show is in part about transgenerational trauma. That perhaps became more explicit when the globe trotting started, but it was brought up as far back as in episode two, not in episode one though. Based on the trailers, I, I really thought Zoe would be in much more of this show. Also, I can't find out if she really is related to Cyclops actor James Marsden, since they share the last name. Could be his daughter, I do see a resemblance. And, yeah, I, th I think maybe the DODC should have been the villains all along. The clandestine didn't have to be villains, especially with how quickly they, you know... Yeah, they were, they... They, they were stopped very easily. Once we reach the, the, yeah. And, let's see, yeah. You know, all the Red Daggers do as it is, is tell Kamala about the Noor, and the clandestine could have done that if they were allies instead of enemies. But I guess they wanted to introduce Red Daggers. Anyway, my way, clandestine are allies, DODC are the only villain, or, even better, as much as I love the good guys using guerrilla tactics in the high school, the clandestine should have been the main villain throughout. They have some way for the good guys to escape the clandestine out of Karachi, and then they catch up to them in Jersey, and that's where the final fight is between the groups, two groups. And maybe right at the very end, the good guys defeat the clandestine, but the clandestine, with their dying breath, managed to open the veil, and then you have, like, a several minutes long scene of the good guys doing something or other to close the veil, and, you know, yeah, maybe it ends with Kamala convincing Cameron, the only surviving clandestine, to close the veil. You know, the way that, you know, in this episode, she does, he does get violent, and she does manage to end up talking him out of the violence. You know, yeah, that. And... Yeah, so we get a brief glimpse into what the damage control agents are thinking, including more microaggressions, although at this point, almost macroaggressions. And I really love seeing Bruno support Cameron, despite disliking him at first. Such good people, the good guys in the show. And later in this episode, Kamala apologizes to Nakia. You know, I, I've seen some people say, oh, you're basically a children's show. I mean, it is... You know, it is for teenagers, and at the end of the day, the MCU has always been about, like, more or less providing good role models. You know, sure, in a lot of the movies, the, you know, the good guy starts out more, like, Tony Stark is really douchey at the start of Iron Man 1, Thor, you know, yeah. He's, he's a real Asgard douche at the start of his movie, but by the end, you know, so, yeah, that's, this is more of that. I like the scene in the subway, the, the way it turns, like, they think that this is going to be it, but then, yeah. And Kamala apologizes to her family, tells them she's got powers. I really love how bad they are at pretending, like, because they're such honest people, you know. They really, like, both Amir and her father, like, Amir is like, oh, oh my god, I didn't know that. And her father's like, you, wow, you have power, you know, just complete, such bad, yeah. And, you know. And and Muniba did tell her father, and because the father always has the phone on, like, which, I don't know if that's supposed to be, like, an immigrant thing. I mean, I know plenty of boomers who always have their phone on the uh, speaker mode, so, yeah. 
and Amir teases her about dropping Shoe Thief. And I, I'm i afraid I forget her name, but Amir's wife is like, do you have to recharge the powers? Which, you know, as others have pointed out, must be a reference to Green Lantern. And her powers so far has resembled Green Lanterns, which, uh, you know, that um, I thought, based on, based on, like, interview stuff, I thought that this show would actually end with her powers being the stretchy kind, like Mr. Fantastic. But not so... F I don't know, maybe maybe in the movie itself, I guess that's... Pop maybe, based on the post credit scene, something happens there that means that they're stretchy instead. Yeah. And... Yeah, love seeing the parents so supportive of her. And Nakia has to call Amir because Kamala didn't answer. We see her ignore her phone right before admitting about the powers to her family. You know, she's like, no, I gotta do this now. The phone can, you know, she doesn't expect it to be like this massive thing because the clandestine are gone. And it seemed like the DODC were calming down based on other, yeah. And at first it sounds like Monima doesn't want Kamala to go at all, but no, it's because she, you know, the, the costume is now finished and and they share some physical affection. Very sweet. And... Let's see. Yeah, and now Kamala's using her powers like a pro. She does stop at the red light as if she were walking on the ground still. And they talk about where to hide. Nakia points out the mosque is under surveillance by several ABC agencies. I really love the reception the DODC agents get at the mosque. Like, you know, they walk in, okay, everybody, I want to see your your um, your identification. You know, and they all have it ready. You know, and and the you know the one guy walks in with you know with cookies, and and I think it's the sheik who tells him, I don't think she likes cookies. She'll like my cookies. Take pride in your work, yeah. They have delicious desserts. If you haven't tried some of the, the desserts that Muslims make, it, it's freaking incredible. And, you know, the sheep wasn't quoting the Quran, but Abe Lincoln. And, you know, and she didn't even... Um, Deaver? No, wait. Deaver's the guy, right? The, the female DODC agent too many names for me to remember. The female DODC agent didn't even recognize it as an Abe Lincoln quote. So basically, you know, this immigrant is more American than the person who's, you know, if, if I had to guess, I don't think she was a recent immigrant because of the, yeah, the various. So, you know, and, and that is true. Like, a lot of conservatives... Like, just recently, Young Turks talked about, there's this, uh, what was his name again? Brandon something. And he's, like, talking about how, you know, oh, you can't, like, immigrants shouldn't have the same rights as natural-born citizens. And as the Young Turks point out, that's literally, like, it's not in the original text of the Constitution, but it's one of the amendments. So what he's, he, ha he doesn't even know. The, amend the Constitution and the amendments to it. You know, it's just... Yeah. Which, you know, the... Cenk Uger and Anna Kasparian... You know, if, if I recall Cenk... When he left... When, when they all... When, when his family left Turkey, he was still a child, you know? And he still understands... You know, okay, law degree, that helps. But, you know, the... And Nakia slows them down, pretending she's hiding Cameron. And the guy in there is so happy at being called her boyfriend that he, that's all he talks about on TikTok later. You know, everyone's talking about, ah, amazing. And most of them are talking about Ms. Marvel. But no, he's, yeah. You'll need a disguise. And he puts baseball caps on them. Just missing the shades. And it's the typical MCU disguise. Cameron's powers are getting more out of control. And Kamala lands in front of them. We get our first full look at her in the new costume. And even Zoe comes through. We're with you. And I guess so is Zoe. 
and we get another animation sequence with Kamala planning things. And Amir shows up because Mom sent a chaperone. But yeah, it's it's I really love seeing the the return of the of the drawing. It really reminded me of the very first episode. I I I'm such a mark for bookending. I love when something starts and ends with something that's very much, you know, cuz she's a different person now. It's not it's not like it's the exact same thing. Her plan in the first one was ridiculous. You know, it's like, "Oh, we're going to fly our bikes onto the the bus and you know all this stuff and then we see it in action and like everything got had to get at least a little bit adjusted you know basically and then with this one the plan does make sense and the the things the things that they do you know some, some people have said it it fails almost immediately it worked at first you know Any questions and all of them raise their hands and our real plan is so you know are we gonna hold off the are, are we gonna what was it are we gonna stop the DODC with tennis balls no we're gonna slow down the DODC agents with tennis balls the real plan is Zoe and Zoe smiles and then everybody else looks and she gets kind of worried and male agent tells female agent they cannot you know, it, if it's in a high school, get out, you know, and instead she calls in all additional units. Her racism has gotten her to stop listening to sense, as happens with uncheck racism. And Zoe uses TikTok to get support, because, you know, what was it she had, like, was it 200,000 or 2 million? She had a ton of followers, so yeah. Target on foot in a red baseball cap, but that's what all the good guys are wearing, so the soldiers won't know who to follow. I really love the Urdu pop music. This was somewhat like the Hawkeye finale, but with chasing instead of fighting. But you know, and 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 the the specialty arrows instead of this more improvised kind of stuff. But yeah, you know, special weapons evening out odds. And they use the foam from the science experiment to cover a bunch of the DODC soldiers. I love that the you know. The, the skeleton, it, at first we see, like, Bruno dancing with it in the background, but then, you know, they put a wig on it and gave it, like, a knife, so it's it's Norma Bates, you know, and pops the balloon and the, the stuff mixes and foam. And th that's how that works, yeah, you know, it's a lot of chemical reactions, you know, once you once you mix them, big, re big reaction, but before you mix them, you know, nothing. And the soldiers get called away shortly before they would have found Kamala and Kamran. And it looks like they're slowing down the soldiers, but then one's come in from behind. I really like the shot of all three getting arrested. One face after another hits the floor. Very nicely planned out and everything. And Cameron is scared of the red daggers. Asks about his mother. And realizes she must be dead. You know, and... Cameron attacks the soldiers, Kamala shields him, and Cameron attacks soldiers, and Kamala goes outside, and, you know, she shields against the bullets, WandaVision also had a government agent firing bullets at good guys, I really love the long takes slow-mo, the camera circling the good guys in the hallway when they all agree to help each other, Sonic Cannons, the Incredible Hulk is still barely canon, that movie's underrated, I don't know what people are talking about, it's, it's no longer hugely relevant because so much of the stuff is, you know, but I thought it was great. I, I really, like, mixing the Bourne movies and this this monster story and this, I, I thought it worked really well. And Begin, yay! Love Kamala going all out here at the very end. Cameron continues to use lethal attacks against soldiers, and the GP launches, flies towards the civilians, accidentally, as sometimes happens when you do evil things. It hits people you didn't mean to. Kamala stops it, filmed on cell phones. Heroes also stopped a driving vehicle from hurting people in the climax in Falcon and Winter Soldier, and that also had innocent people inside of driving vehicles. So, I, I don't know, I, I guess some people might say, oh, they're running out of ideas. I, I feel like it's... 
a good the, these shows are very different from each other overall it's it's sort of a thematic kind of thing and Cameron unleashes Kamala wakes way towards him reaches him makes a force field and manages to talk him down and the DODC agents push through the crowd that want to protect Kamala very Spider-Man 2 and male agent chews out female agents the civilians cheer as the DODC leave and all the Jersey Pakistani TikTokers celebrate even shoe thief he who does say you know I I wish you know I wish she hadn't gotten my leg broken but you know and Zoe tries to be an ally give a voice to Nakia I also briefly wanted to say I, I don't know if it's you know with Nakia I, I don't know about her sexuality but you know when when Zoe and Nakia were you know working on the the guerrilla tactics you know alone together earlier you know Zoe said I think Kamala should be able to tell the world when she's ready to which some people have interpreted as that she's closeted lesbian and or bi and that yeah could be although i guess that does mean it falls into the 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 trope of the the closeted person being a bully and it's yeah but i guess i mean at the end of the day she wasn't that much of a bully you know what when she we thought that she was basically like taking credit for or you know not taking credit but getting all the attention in episode 2 maybe she was actually thinking if kamala wanted everyone to know that she has powers she would have come out and said it she would be on my tiktok she would ask can i say this on your tiktok that actually yeah when she was like and it when they meet and and you know in the in the hallway and or on the on the stairs and you know kamala it was it was filmed kind of awkwardly the blocking was off so but i think she accidentally knocked a book out of zoe's hand and you know she apologizes and zoe says i like your necklace and kamala responds it's my name in urdu and then Zoe like looks kind of like like she she has like the face of I wasn't I didn't care, I don't really care you know kind of thing was that her worried that she would come off as actually attracted to I don't know maybe I'm giving her too much credit I would like to I I kind of hope that they do like a video where the the you know i don't know if it's the actress the writers or the directors who came up with this idea but i i i can't help but wonder if they were putting in little things that now you can reinterpret anyway and we get a montage letting us know what happens to various people nakia as a mosque board member working hard but in her element you know she's she really like she she clearly feels stress about it every so often, but when we see her, like, when, you know, when she talked Kamala's father into supporting her for mosque board member, like, she was on a roll, like, this is her calling, this is what she should be doing, she's so good at it, it's something she cares about, you know, so, yeah, it, I really loved seeing that as just the, yeah, and Cameron goes to Red Dagger, and Kamala means perfect in Arabic, but Marvel in Urdu. I share the same name as Carol Frickin' Danvers. I don't know who that is. You're our Miss Marvel. So she gets her name from her parents, because this isn't about her leaving her culture, it's about reconciling it with the American parts of her. And she forms the lightning with hard light. One week later. At first it sounds like Nakia is saying... Bruno, you know, you be you belong in New Jersey. But she's saying he should go and leave the car. I really love her teasing him. It never comes across as mean. Just 
teasing. They've known each other for years. And, yeah. You know, confirms he is Caltech. Like a mutation. An X-gene mutation? Certainly the music seems to think so. Or a Cree gene manipulation. I guess we'll find out maybe in the Marvels. A lot of people seem to be very convinced that it's X-gene mutation. I think that would make a lot of sense. You know, I... I I don't think it makes us. I'm just very briefly going to talk about. It. I've I've already you know in other videos I've done on the show, I've already talked about the Inhumans require a lot of background, and their their miniseries did very poorly. I've now read an article where both of the you know. G. Willow Wilson and Sana La... Ah, crap. Sana Amat, I think is her name. The two, the co-creators of Ms. Marvel, they wanted to make her a mutant when they created the character for the comic books. And really, you know, it's like Perlmutter didn't want to be making... You know, he didn't want to put out X-Men comic books because he felt like that was just helping the Fox movies. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of torn on it. I can understand where he was coming from, but, it's, yeah. Anyway, you know, Ms. Marvel, if not for Ike Perlmutter, would have been a mutant in the comics, you know? So, people get, I, I get frustration. I, I sometimes get frustrated when they change things, but I think this is a change for the better. I don't think the Inhumans are going to be, like, a major thing in the MCU going forward. We already know that mutants are, and yeah, you know, if this if she is our first mutant, you know, now we have a ah, what's it called? Hypothetically, let's say that in one of the next movies, actually, yeah, maybe at some point in Ms. Mar uh, the Marvels, maybe the post-credit scene, you know, um, a bald guy in a wheelchair approaches. Kamala, and you know, yeah, so, something like I've I've been trying to reach you. I'm very much like you. How do you feel about changing schools? You know, some something like that. <clears throat> we have our in, you know, and from there you can build out the the rest of the. Yeah, I, I think it makes a ton of sense. But I get people being frustrated. Yeah, I love this episode. One of the best, possibly the best finale of MCU D Disney Plus show. Result, every major conflict. Fair enough. Bruno was rushed. Fair enough, maybe also. And Cameron's. The climactic battle was great. Not as much plot rushed through as Moon Knight's finale. Most of it had been set up or even resolved, like clandestine before this episode, including some rush, like clandestine. That one did have the villain be someone that had been introduced much sooner, and the show treated like them like a potential villain from the start, which not all of the MCU Disney Plus shows do. Hawkeye's finale was fun, but it was mostly a lot of action and some rushed conclusions, although the Yelena Clint conflict was emotional. You know, it like Kate's mom getting arrested was very, very rushed. It feels like we should have spent a little bit more time on that, considering that the relationship between them was a big part of the show leading up to that. Kazi was wasted. I know it would be difficult to fix in the finale, but I would have been very happy with him just surviving and a strong hint he would become the clown. Like, let's see, uh, doesn't he have, like, I feel like he has, like, red lips or some something, you know, not quite Joker, you know, but yeah. Maybe if, like, the there was some blood, oh wait, that would be too, res that would resemble an a movie that came out not that long. Anyway, just just some yeah, let's say like they they fight in I don't know, uh there's there's some what's it called? There's like some some flower or something and it gets on him and you know, his face gets gets really white and so he takes some and looks at it and like looks at his reflection and does like a thing. that's not bad kind of thing, you know. 
And, you know, the next time we see him could very easily have been the Echo Show. That would make a ton of sense. You know, instead of him dying, and in such a dull manner, too. You know, I don't mind, I don't mind the overall confrontation, like this thing of, you know, he tells her, I should have been the lieutenant, not you, you know, but don't have that end with him dying. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier finale, it's good, and it definitely shows off the new Captain America's powers more than this shows off Kamala's powers. Not saying this show needed as much action as that had, but it, you know, it was very much a thing of we see all the things that Captain America can do. And I, do, I think it was also, like, this show did not have the budget of that show. And, you know, it was very forced how Sharon was suddenly in America again. And what was the plan of the Flag Smashers once the hostage thing fell? Why not try to run instead of slowing down to fight? Like, in an earlier episode, one of them stood and fought and the rest escaped, bought them time. And... I, I don't personally mind that much the idea of Sharon being the power broker. I personally think they needed to do something with that character if they were going to bring her back. And, yeah, it's just, like, I feel bad for her because she really... They do some interesting setup for her in Captain America 2 and 3. And then, you know, years pass with her not making any appearances. I, I don't know if she was always supposed to be the power broker i i think they needed to do something with her and that's definitely something you know they couldn't just bring her back now, now that now that steve rogers is gone you know that was the one like in the in captain america 2 she was spying on him captain america 3 she helps him a lot you know in captain america 2 she also does help him from the from the outside but with him gone, you know, yeah, you, you have to bring something else in. So, WandaVision finale, I love the show leading up to the finale. I think it was a mistake for the finale to focus so much on stopping Agatha instead of exploring more that what Wanda did was monstrous. I get how she got there, but it was still monstrous. I, I have nothing but empathy for people who grieve, but yeah. I don't mind that it's no longer a sitcom. But the action-packed climax felt at odds with the rest of the episodes. And before I move on, all of these finales have some really great character moments. So, the post credit scene. You know, some, some people have interpreted as Kamala accidentally making herself look like Carol Danvers, like she does in the comic. But, you know, I've, I believe it is Kamala and Carol swapping places. And I'm guessing we'll have that explained in the Marvels. Maybe Kamala went to the negative zone a la a different Captain Marvel than Danvers. If you look at her face, when you know, she, she wakes up and she looks at the um, board she broke through and she looks around the room at all the Captain Marvel, you know, fan stuff. I don't think Kamala would be doing that. Kamala wouldn't be surprised that she's in her own room still. You know, she, if, if the, <clears throat> I think if it was surprised at now looking like Carol Danvers, she would have held up a mirror. But, you know, yeah, Carol Danvers suddenly finding herself in a, in a room she doesn't know and being maybe a little bit creeped out that this is, you know, that there's, there's so much fan stuff of her, which is, oh, that's going to be funny when they meet. And, like, you know, the, the, yeah. The first time they meet, Kamala is going to approach Carol and be like, I am such a big fan of you. And Carol is going to be like, I saw your bedroom. Let's see. Now, I've seen others point out that considering the show is about spreading empathy and awareness about South Asian people, it is messed up that the villains are still these evil foreigners. I think they should have just had white guys fighting for the government as the villain, like the DODC, and, you know, certainly WandaVision attempted to do this, but again, you know, what she, what Wanda was doing was evil, so, but, you know, Falcon and the Winter Soldier at least attempts to be, in part, a conflict between people like John Walker and immigrants, you know, the, the Flag Smashers, which is 
also, you know, again, like, the immigrants are causing violence, so it is, like, it would make a lot more sense if it was legitimately just, yeah, I, I don't know, Disney, I hope Disney gets better at this, because it really is, and Hawkeye was kind of also about, like, the, the most, ah, one of the, one of the people we, ah, one of the antagonistic forces we see over and over are the Eastern European immigrants, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, anyway. I love the home aloneness of the school scenes. Others have pointed out, please stop setting action scenes that involve guns in and around schools. I agree. So, when Kamala first gets her powers, it is a mix of the two cultures. The reason she dresses as Captain Marvel is the American side of her. You know, her father doesn't even know who Carol Danvers is. But the reason she put on the bangle is that it belongs to her family, their past. When her family first tried to support the Avengers Con thing by saying she can go with her father, and they could dress up the same character together, that's too far removed from something she's comfortable with. By the end of the show, they compromise. She does accept the costume that her mother makes for her, or finishes for her, which fits their culture better than dressing like Carol Danvers did, and she gets the superhero alter ego name from what her parents think of her as, and also as a tribute to Carol Danvers. It was never about her leaving behind her culture. That was never what she wanted to do, nor to be exactly the way her parents started out wanting her to be, and get very far away from the American part of her. It was all about finding a healthy middle ground. Yeah, I've seen some people say that, you know, Brie Larson's costume was already so toned down that what would be the problem with, you know, Kamala dressing like that? But, and, and you know, for sure in the comics, it's it's a, yeah, you know, I, I forget who said it, but it's like a bathing suit, basically. And that was something I, I read that Brie Larson said, you know, she insisted from the start, my costume cannot be a bathing suit. I am not running around the inner city in a bathing suit. That's just not a thing that's going to happen. You know, just put pants on her, you know, and, 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 and sleeves. I don't think her costume in the comics has sleeves either. So, yeah, it's just, yeah. Anyway, the, the, I realized that for a long time that was what comic book costumes looked like. Anyway. The, uh, it, yeah, I forget exactly who, but one of the, the, um, yeah, it was either Screen Rant, New Rockstars, possibly Heavy Spoilers, one of them pointed out that the, the, I think it was in maybe Bollywood or something, you know, you could see that the women, you know, they, they had, they wore stuff that covered their body you know, further down, you know, the, the problem was the tight pants that weren't covered with something else. And, you know, in this, yeah, she gets the, the sash, I think it's called. I'm not a clothes person. I don't know a lot about clothes as what I'm trying to do. <laughs> I do wear them. I, um, yes, the, the, ah, what was it called? The, the sash. She gets a sash to cover that part of her, you know, and yeah, just just a tiny bit further down, just past the... She's a teenager, so I'm trying to not be... It Yeah, the sash covers a... You know, if you're watching this video, presumably you have access to the episode, you can go check. The, the sash covers a little bit further down. So, talking about character growth, Kamala starts the season unsure of, actually, yeah, if you just want to hear stuff about this particular episode, you know, for the for the rest of this episode, ugh, this was video, it's going to be, like, over all, over the all six episodes, and this video is already longer than these usually are. But this is the last time I talk spoilers about the show, in, well, yeah, other than, you know, Talking about movies down the line that pay off. So anyway, 
character growth. Tamala starts the season unsure of how to be, who to be, and how her more conservative family and her own admiration of pop culture, especially superheroes, can be reconciled. By the end of the season, she is confident, embracing her superpowers with her family's blessing. As such, her mother went through growth, trusting Kamala more. You know, in the first yeah, first episode, like literally. I th yeah, I think first Kamala says, don't you trust me? And Muniba just says no. And then the father tries to save it by saying, of course we trust you. No, I don't. You know, and now she's expressing trust. I'm not sure I would say that brother or father grow. They... I can Actually, yeah, I guess at first the father didn't want her to go without him. And now he... Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess brother, the uh, Amir, the brother, trusts her more by the end. Bruno and Nakia barely grow over the season. We're told in the pilot that she's political and he's smart. The season ends with her working in politics, him leaving for Caltech. You know, not a not a huge leap. Like, it would be one thing if at first he was smart, but lacked confidence about being smart. But, you know, the, the only reason he didn't want to go to Caltech right away was because he was going to miss Kamala. You know, that's... So, so yeah, he, he, and actually, yeah, he says, you know, I can't leave for Caltech unless I know you're safe. And by the end, she's safe. You know, she doesn't need, she doesn't need to, to practice more with him. She has her powers under control and, you know, she knows enough about her powers. You know, the things that he provided aren't strictly necessary. They're welcome, but not strictly necessary anymore. I guess you could say that because of Kamala's encouragement Nakia grows to embrace the idea of becoming a board member maybe Bruno grows to accept that Kamala considers him a friend to help Kamran little if any growth for Kamran Red Dagger's clandestine other than Aisha maybe Najima since with her dying breath she saves her son after abandoning him I mean and yeah I mean Zoe I think yeah. Yeah, I guess she does grow somewhat, I don't know, I, I, because now I'm really not, by the end of the show, she is completely okay with telling the world that she cares about Kamala and Nakia, so that is growth. But, but yeah, the, the characters that didn't have a lot of character growth did not have enough screen time for it, I, I would say. Uh, uh. Let's see. Yeah, uh, the, the, um, oh, actually, yeah, that, that does work. Yeah. I'm not sure how I, th I, I, yeah, I believe those are all of the major characters covered. I'm not sure I feel like Hamlin getting intentionally violent with his powers made sense. New rock stars think he was possessed by Najma. Could be. I don't. I don't find that all that satisfying. Of a. I. I never. I. I realize stuff like that happens in the comics all the time. I don't think it's as satisfying as when the character actually has a reason. For, yeah, you know he wasn't fighting someone who killed his mother, and you know they could have had that first soldier, you know, in the uh, in the bathroom. They could have had it, you know, if he showed like no sympathy, like he tells them to freeze, and Kamala's like, leave him alone. His mother just died, and the soldier goes, so then it would make more sense, you know. It it kind of, I I understand. I've also seen some say it's basically he's. He's been oppressed his whole life, hunted his whole life. So, you know, that's also... But then that was the Red Daggers. Wasn't wasn't it? Like, uh, the DODC haven't been hunting him because they only recently got to America, as far as I understood. They Like, they've been going around, you know, trying to find... Were they just hiding in America? I guess that's possible. Anyway, but my point is, it did not really feel earned. I, I completely understand, you know, the, the impulse to make, 
the, the, the idea behind having him attack his oppressors. And that's also something where I feel like I, I wish that it had been that he's like getting ready for violence. And then Kamala says, if you attack them, you prove them right. You prove their prejudices about us right. And he realizes that and he refuses to attack. And he uses his powers for defense like she does, you know, something like that. I, I get it. I, I it just you know Sean Chandler talks movies. You know in general he did a, a great video about this episode and the other episodes. He pointed out that at the end of the day the DODC they're not completely one hundred percent in the wrong because they are attacking a young person who has you know these powers that that he you know. For some of it, he they're out of control, and he could hurt someone accidentally. And for some of it, he is intentionally using them to attack. And it's just, yeah, it's it's frustrating when they do the yeah. I let's see. It felt like a forced way to get Kamala fighting someone else with superpowers in the finale. And in that case, I would have preferred a superpowered DODC agent, a personification of the embedded racism. Then even if we have not seen Kamala hit by a lot, it hurt Nakia and that upset Kamala. I do believe Kamala talking Cameron down in the little bubble she made for them. And I liked her line about no normal, accepting she'll never completely fit in with either of her worlds. But that's okay. We just, we, What's important is what we make of what we have, you know. I, just, I I wish that had been her talking him out of violence before he committed any violence. I think it would have been stronger, especially, yes, if the show and, you know, if, if the DODC were the only villain and they're like, you're, you know, you, you have powers, you, you know, you can't be trusted, we have to stop you. And Kamala points out, we've never hurt anyone with our powers. We've only defended ourselves and saved people. And then the female DODC agent says, you can't be trusted. You're going to, you're going to do something wrong at some point, you know, like, like Trump's saying of the, of the Central Park Five, what were they doing there? You know, this idea that a lot of conservative white people have of, you know, immigrants, it's just a matter of time before they do something wrong, you know. And then, you know, maybe, yeah, the, the female, female DODC agent reveals that she has superpowers. And then, you know, either it's a, maybe she fights both Cameron and Kamala and they need to work together to take her down. Or she fights Kamala and Cameron. Maybe, yeah, maybe... Mm, yeah, I don't know if, cause I kind of want her to win without any help. Yeah, I think I think you know the the yeah d you know DODC female DODC agent shows she has powers, and you know it's the MCU, so let's just make it that she has the same powers as Kamala, cause that they like to have the the protagonist with powers fight someone with very similar powers and you know Kamala tells Cameron go you know go to the docks to take the you know so so you can get out of here and Cameron is like you sure you don't need help and you could have like a thing of Kamala you know punching the female DODC agent and she you know goes staggering and say I've got this under control and Cameron turns and runs away and Kamala is like, yeah, I got this. And then she takes a punch, you know, because it's the MCU. They like to undercut, you know, yeah. So, you know, undercut with a joke. And have, like, the the battle, you know, all the all the CG that they spend with her stopping bullets and making the, the you know, yeah. Maybe female DODC agent throws a, a vehicle and it accidentally goes towards civilians and you can tell on her face, oh, that wasn't supposed to happen, you know, and Kamala catches it and puts it down and just, you know, I'm not asking for, I, I, I would almost bet money that this show had a smaller budget than some of the other shows 
I'm not asking for something that they wouldn't have been able to do. I'm just asking the stuff that they did do with CG in this episode, I would rather have, have seen. I, I, I think that would be stronger. And then you end the episode with, like, let's see, maybe, yeah, yeah. Nakia goes into the 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 DODC building and the the male agent you know I'm I'm not sure she would be able to get past front desk but like yeah the the male agent you know receives like gets a call of okay I'm I'll be right there you know hangs up goes down and Nakia is standing at front desk looking very offended and you know yeah the, the guy's like what what is you know and she points out all the wrong things that the DODC agents have done you know including the the search of the of the mosque for example twice and the or wait yeah one search i guess but going into the mosque twice uninvited you know and maybe the the agent starts to say some of those are just rumors and you know she like holds up her phone and like you know cycles through like she has you know video of some of its still photos of other things you know cuz they have you know DODC is written on like the the lapels or whatever those are called yeah so so the the uh, what's it called y yeah you know so so yeah, and and the DODC agent is very reluctant to admit anything. So he yeah he he starts to say something like, maybe we could launch an internal investigation. And Nakia says that's not good enough. And and the the agent is like offended, like not good enough. What are you, who do you think you are? And then you know his his cell phone goes off. Um, one second, you know. Yes, Mr. President, and, you know, so the, the, yeah, it, it transpires that Nakia has, you know, she's already contacted some of the, you know, various other, you know, and, yeah, the president thinks there should be, you know, some, something need, like, they're, they're, like, cutting their funding, or they're, they're shutting down certain offices, or, you know, and and maybe yeah have it be the you know the 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 very last thing be you know if i ever hear you targeting muslims again there will be serious consequences you know something like that you know yes i realize that's not that's not quite like the real world and the mcu does try to resemble the real world in some respects but you know at the end of falcon and the winter soldier they acknowledged the sacrifice of I, I'm afraid I forget his name, but uh, Carl Lumley, uh, you know, his character and, and the, that whole experiment thing, you know, so clearly it's not always, you know, and I, uh, yeah, anyway, personally, I loved all of the cultural stuff on the show. I have read that some South Asian people felt represented, others didn't. I hope more did than didn't. And yeah, so the story, I like how we gradually learned more about the Bangles and the Noor. I did think that the storytelling was awkwardly paced, like other MCU Disney Plus shows, especially these six episode ones. Some plot stuff was given too little time, like clandestine red daggers. I do think that the family, including extended family, were great. You got a real sense of who they were, their relationships with each other were like, you know, some, sometimes we forget when we're watching something like this, these are actors. Like, okay, they worked together for maybe a month shooting this, but a lot of them never met each other before, and now they're they have to convince us that they've known each other for decades. You know, like when when Muniba says something to or about Kamala, we have to believe that she spent 16 years raising this girl. You know, it's it's not just that she got a script and she's being directed and, you know, so, yeah. The conflict between the American and South Asian parts of Kamala were handled very well. Oh, the conflict was handled 
She doesn't feel completely at home in either, but she's not alone. Her family can help with the South Asian parts. Bruno via phone, and maybe now Zoe can help with the American parts. I don't know if there's a ton of room for her, but I do kind of hope that some of these show up in, like, Nakia and maybe the family, like, maybe they record a message on Carol Danvers' phone, like, you know, first of I I kind of hope that we see exactly what happened right after Carol Danvers ran out of frame, which is already a funny way to leave it, but, like, if... Ah, it should maybe almost be like a a flashback, probably. But yeah, like the first time, you know, the Captain Marvel movie loved its flashbacks. So yeah, or or the I guess not flashback, but people looking at you know remembering the past kind of thing. Anyway, you know maybe yeah. So so I already said the thing about you know. Carol Danvers saying, yeah, I, I saw your bedroom. And then, you know, she explains, I think the Negapants, Negapants, the, the bangle, I think they swapped our places. So I woke up in your house. And, and Kamala's like, how did they react to that? And, you know, we see a flashback and they're like yelling at her like, Get out of our house! Like, think like the 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 part where they're yelling at the the driving instructor. Uh, you know that that kind of energy. You know, maybe maybe take it up a couple of notches. You know, and like after yeah, after all of it, you know, Carol Danvers manages to to talk them into, you know, just to just to prove that she's not there to hurt Kamala when she finds her. You know, record a cell phone message of what they want to, you know, yeah, a cell phone message to show to Kamala, and we get some more of that energy of, you know, and, and, cause, cause Monipa has been so great, you know, all throughout with her, with her worry for Kamala, and obviously, by the end of the show, she trusts her, but with the post credit scene, she apparently went, you know, she teleported somewhere. That would be a good reason to worry, at, at least a little bit, you know. And the, let's see. Yeah, so, so you know, yeah, the, the, the family and Nakia all record this message telling, telling Kamala, you know, we, we trust Carol Danvers now, you know, you're, you're going to be okay, and, you know, hopefully, just, yeah, the, and the, and they slide in little, like, Moniba, let's see, yeah, there, there was that part where she said, did you, did you eat too much, or not enough, you know, so maybe, she said, you know, it, remember, to, remember to eat enough, or something, and the, the father, like, ah, let's see, maybe something about, you know, that, that, synthetic food he liked i mean he can call bruno himself now for the for the it help and such and yeah the the let's see yeah and and nakia you know would be talking about some kind of political cause thing and maybe carol danvers also also got a message from bruno and, I mean, he's also really nerdy about the superheroes, so he probably has some questions for... Yeah, and, and... The, the, let's see... It, yeah, and, and then Kamala's like... At least they didn't send Amir with you, right? And, and Carol is like... I have never had to work so hard to convince someone of something in my life. And I once talked people into accepting that I was Cree. You know, so, some, yeah. Let's see. I don't love the body cam joke. Body cams were supposed to help ensure accountability for police brutality. Them existing is a reminder that police brutality is a problem. And there are still huge problems with police brutality. You know, the guy jokes, oh, I want to check the body cam footage because Nakia said he was her boyfriend. Just, I, I would have cut that personally. So, I recommend the videos on this episode.
by I already mentioned Sean Chandler talks about in general you know I haven't watched absolutely everything he's done on MCU stuff but I have been keeping up you know recent I I guess has it been a year it's 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 been a minute since I subscribed and he you know I don't agree with everything he says but he does tend to do really good analysis and when there's something that is just his opinion he says you know this is just my opinion I'm not saying that you're wrong if you disagree with this you know but yeah in addition to him screen crush Jesse gender after dark heavy spoilers new rock stars and nerdist yeah their videos on this episode their videos on the show in general uh, yeah so yeah I am gonna hit stop record and then I am gonna do the review of the show without spoilers so catch you next week or in that one first